And good morning, everyone. Here, Andres Souza, Vaha Vibes, Black Belt Peddler, and we are live from Catalina, California, to cover the 2023 Catalina Channel Crossing. I have here on my side uh, Mike Kalama from Hawaii and my friend uh, Tehoto de Bois, straight up from Tahiti. Teho uh, the, those guys are going to be running the show today. Guys, good morning. Welcome to the Va Vibes live streaming. Mike, it's a pleasure to have you here. Tehoto, it's a pleasure to have you here, buddy. The show's yours. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Thank you for uh, having us here today. And again, first off, we want to just go ahead and thank our, our sponsors, Audi, Audi Outrigger World and uh, Tahiti Va. Uh, right now, uh, we're just getting set up. My name is Michael Kalama. Aloha and good morning and welcome to the 2023 Catalina Channel Crossing here. Um, I got Tehotu. He's going to tell us a little bit about himself and I'll introduce himself to you guys. Hi, everyone. My name is Tehotu. I'm uh, 33 years old and I paddled yesterday with the co-edge crew so we won it yesterday and it's a pleasure for me to be with you guys today. Yeah guys and um, for the people in Brazil right now, uh, pessoal do Brasil nós estamos começando a transmissão aqui da Catalina Crossing Channel e peço desculpas desde já pelo imprevisto de ontem nós tivemos um problema técnico com o nosso drone e parte do equipamento uh, uh, teve problema com, com água, então uh, nós conseguimos recuperar, uh, comprar mais equipamento para fazer essa live streaming para vocês uh, hoje aqui. Muitos barcos de, meu, de Molokai foi cancelada, então nós temos barcos de Hawaii, Tahiti, uh, name it, all around the world. I'm gonna try, eu vou estar tá tentando trazer alguns convidados aí do Brasil, o Ronald, uh, eu já falei com ele mais cedo, Uh, para essa live streaming vai ser um pouquinho uh, desafiador porque nós vamos estar tá cru cruzando aí 32 milhas no meio do, 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 do mar aqui na Califórnia uh, mas a gente vai fazer esse show aí para vocês uh, mais uma vez aqui nós vamos estar tá fazendo esse comentário em português, inglês e, also, e também em francês com o Terroto aqui now guys back to English I would like to Terroto to take a break and Tell people in Tahiti about this race. Uh, Tehoto, you're going to be doing the comments in French as well, okay? So people in Tahiti can uh, follow the, the live streaming of the Catalina 2023 Channel Crossing. Yes, yes thanks, thanks, Andre. So again, um, as you can see, we're about to get started. We're less than 10 minutes away from this race start here. We have all the boats lining up. It looks like they're heading upwards to get started. Um, they're kind of spread out they're about a good half a mile apart from the inside boat to the outside boat i believe we have just over 60 entries uh, for this race and currently this crossing is going to start right outside of avalon and it's going to make its way all the way to the newport channel we're looking at close to a 30 mile crossing here so really excited to see what's going to happen so for the viewers who are watching right now we are about five to ten minutes away from our race start Il y aura un à tout le monde, donc euh, nous sommes là actuellement à Catalina. Le départ est prévu à, à 10h, hein, donc dans à peu près 10 minutes. Là, on peut voir euh, tous les équipages euh, s'échauffer, commencer à se placer là sur la ligne de départ. Au niveau des conditions, c'est assez calme. Il y aura peut-être un petit vent de côté, mais je pense qu'ils euh, vont bien s'amuser aujourd'hui. Merci pour la théo tout. So at this point. We are again just a little bit, five minutes out from probably getting started. We currently have all the escort boats kind of talking to their crews and uh, making sure everybody's set up. Obviously, they did all their preparations um, as the boats started to arrive into Avalon uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, all of these paddlers are going to, you know, make adjustments to their rigs and they're going to make sure everything is set up. Um, currently, we're looking and expecting some really good conditions for this Catalina crossing. Um, we are looking to have a, a pretty decent swell in the middle of this channel, and we're going to see a little bit of everything. We're going to see a battle from the very beginning of this race, and uh, we're going to see some separations right about that half an hour to one hour mark. We're going to kind of get to see where the boats are going to be positioning themselves as they get uh, into the banks. Uh, once we find out how that's going to happen, we, we're going to bring everything live to you we're going to follow as much as we can but we're going to stick to the front of the pack and we want to give you all of that live uh exciting uh crossing here so thanks for joining us and um we'll we're going to get right to it pretty soon so st stay tuned 
E é isso aí pessoal, a transmissão continua aqui, comentários em inglês, português e francês, os barcos aqui estão se alinhando para começar essa prova, são muitos barcos participando dessa prova aqui, nós vamos ter um duelo aí de barcos da Puaqueia com barcos uh, taitianos das Matarrinas, as famosas Matarrinas e, e, e as Malolos, vão estar tá duelando aí né, nessa, nessas águas, o time da Shelva A do Taiti está aqui presente, outros, outros time, time campeão mundial do, do Hawaii, o time havaiano aí de Coa vai estar tá presente nessa prova com um reforço taitiano nesse barco também. Outros times aqui é, com reforços é, de todas as partes do mundo. Aqui passando em frente ao nosso barco aqui, o time da Lana Aquila, aqui o time do Danny Tim. So, então essa prova aqui vai estar tá muito disputada. Mike, I was telling the followers here in Brazil about uh, the... You, I'm seeing here a lot of boats, maybe because Molokai is not happening, a lot of people came to this race. Uh, it's going to be a very, very challenging uh, uh, first battle for the first place, second place here in this race, right? Absolutely. There's definitely going to be a really good fight uh, this, uh, this evening, and we're going to go ahead and see how things kind of pan out. Right now, currently, um, there is no Molokai uh, channel race this year. Um, again, we want to you know, go ahead and um, send our prayers and condolences to everyone affected in Hawaii, especially in Lahaina, Maui. Um, you know, let us let us know how we can help you. There is going to be some links later for, for anybody that wants to go ahead and donate to the families that have been affected uh, with the wildfire that happened in Maui. And uh, again, our, our prayers are, are with each and every one of you. At this time, uh, a lot of this race is dedicated to uh, Lahaina Strong and, you know, It was a really big impact for the state of Hawaii, but I think across the nation as well. I think this uh, this uh, devastating fire obviously reached out to the entire world, and I know that the Hawaii people, and personally myself, I, I know we're very gracious and uh, a lot of gratitude to all those that uh, supported each and every one of our family uh, there in, in Maui. So again, uh, thanks for that, but absolutely um, there's exciting uh, racers that are here from Hawaii. They're going to be representing uh, some of the Hawaii crews and that's going to be with our open uh, men's unlimited as well as some of our master men. So we're going to see um, some strong Hawaii paddlers, but absolutely I know that uh, Te Hutu, there's, uh, there's a lot of strong Tahitians here again, yet again. Um, and as we all know, there's uh, Shell and a few other clubs. Do you want to tell us about any of those crews? Oui, donc aujourd'hui, pas mal de Tahitians sont sont descendus justement pour euh, cette course et c'est vrai que le fait que Molokai soit annulé ben, beaucoup de Tahitiens euh, aiment aussi euh, ramer à l'étranger, pas uniquement euh, chez nous, hein, au Fénois et donc euh, je pense qu'il y aura du beau combat là aujourd'hui euh, une petite pensée hein, pour tous nos Hawaïens là, qui, ont, qui ont subi euh, get fired by la Haina so we are with you guys And uh, yes, many Tahitian. We got Shell. We got some of the guys who reinforce like Kalahuikai, Offshore, and uh, Hanu Hanu. It's super exciting. So at this point, you know, the, we're about to get started and we're about to get our race uh, on its way. Uh, is there anything that we should be expecting for this race start? Um, do you think that there's going to be a lot of push in the very beginning um, and try to create that separation? Um, do you think this first, maybe first five miles will be a more of an all-out sprint to kind of separate? Yes, you have to have a good start. Not every race is you have to to go out the pack. And then don't forget that it's a 30 miles race. So the result is at the end, not at the start. But you have to have a good start, no? C'est vrai que c'est bien d'avoir un bon départ parce que ben faut sortir du paquet. Et ensuite, ben, en fonction, gérer, euh, gérer ses efforts, parce que c'est quand même une course de 50 km là aujourd'hui. Donc il ne va pas trop falloir donner, bien gérer la première heure et ensuite voir en fonction comment la course évolue, pour euh, s'il faut changer, s'il faut peut-être maintenir. Si une équipe fonctionne bien, ben, on la maintient. Got it. Yeah, definitely, again, uh, for those of you viewing, um, absolutely, there's going to be a strong, strong start here. Um, And just like Teotu said, this is a long race. Uh, you're looking at 30 miles. And uh, there we go. We just got the horn. It just went off. And our racers are off. 60 plus canoes taking off right here in Avalon and making their way all the way to the Newport jetty. 
Um, this is going to be a really exciting race for everyone to follow. Um, currently, the race has started. Our Catalina 2023 crossing is now on its way. And, and Micah, uh, I have some people uh, on the comments here. Uh, you feel free, guys, to join the live streaming, do your comments. We're going to be reading the comments. So, Char Sharon Connor, hi, uh, Sharon, thank you for, for following and, and listening to us. She's asking here if we have an idea of how many canoes entries uh, are, are in, this, in this race today. So, as of right now, we were told there's uh, an upwards of 60 plus entries. Um, we didn't get the official count. Um, we didn't have access to all the official counts, but as we start uh, watching this race, we can give you a really good estimate on it. But currently, if you look at this pack on our live feed, you're going to see that there's uh, roughly a little over 60 canoes um, in this pack. So we'll get that number shortly. We'll also, again, be following some of our top crews, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, chase them and keep you all informed on exactly what we're doing. Also, comments are like from Miami, from Florida. Nestor Guilherme, my friend Nestor. Hey, guys, you're looking great today. Uh, thank you, Nestor. Juan Lorenzo is saying, the weather is fantastic. The Matahina will be there soon. So, yeah, uh, tell me more about the boats and, and how they, the Peperu should be behaving, what he should be looking for. We have a, the, one of the best Peperu all time here in the boat, the Tejoto de Bois. For who doesn't know, Tehoto uh, is steer for Shell, is steer for uh, Team Air Tahiti and uh, CPS. So, guys, how how we can expect the swells affecting the canoes? What the paper? What's the people should be aware to get a perfect line for this race? Yeah, perfect person to go ahead and let us know um, exactly what they would be looking at as a open steersman and a, and an excellent steersman at that. So tell to what, what do you think uh, is the best thing and what do you think is going to affect this race as we get going? For me, you have to have a good, a large vision no, of the, the ocean, the line, the, the swells coming, the wind, when the, where the wind is blowing. So it's not only like push down, push down. It's many things, the element and you have to feel the speed of huh? the canoe if the speed is good so the steersmen have to say that hey okay we can't we can we're on it we're on it okay and then when some swells coming you just push push to get them to to get more gap huh? yeah absolutely i think that's uh, the best way to put it um the steersmen again guys it's all about it's a long race um but definitely it's all about vision and all the elements considering everything that's happening throughout this channel race. In the beginning, we have a tight pack. Everyone was pushed up right against each other. And they're, of course, they're going to battle. You're going to see the battle at the start. You're going to see some battles throughout this course. And uh, to, to put it best, it's all about reading the elements. It's all about understanding your crew and if the boat is running nice and smooth. But um, as mentioned before, conditions look pretty, pretty excellent at this point. It feels... It feels really smooth right now, but there's going to be a, a swell that will be carrying out throughout the channel. So we're going to see how that plays out um, throughout this race. But as 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 mentioned, uh, Andre, did you want to go ahead and share that with some of your viewers on exactly what the steersman um, has to do? Yeah, like uh, I think Tehoto was uh, on point uh, when we talk about getting ready to steer a race like that. Uh, you have to be checking the conditions. You have to be uh, looking at, looking around all the, the the elements of the nature, right? How the waves are affecting your boat, it's side wind, it's side waves. So the, it's a very very challenging race for the Peperos here. And we see here that I think from this shot of the drone, we can see a yellow canoe uh, on the top of the group, leading the group. I'm 100% sure that that's Shelva, right? As of right now, I, I believe so. I believe that uh, Shell has absolutely tried to go ahead and uh, push this right at the start, get a good uh, opening run for for potentially that first place spot and maybe hold that position just to uh, keep, keep canoes at length, but work on their best to actually uh, uh, push a little bit farther. So um, 
shortly what we're gonna do guys is we're gonna make our way up to the pack we're gonna take maybe a quick commercial break so that way we can uh, make our movements we're gonna be covering this entire race for its entire 30 30 miles and again we're so thankful to have each and every one of you here uh, we'll be shortly with you and uh, enjoy this this live feed for this commercial thank you <laughs> This is probably one of our first few times going on to the V6. Uh, next few weeks, I'll learn how to steer as well. And I hope that we can paddle just like them. And we're back here with the 2023 Catalina Crossing again. Uh, my name is Michael Kalama. I'm here with Teotu Dubois, and we're we're here bringing you live coverage here of the Catalina Crossing. You just saw the race start just happen. We are currently making our way back all the way up to the front of the pack. Yeah, you um, can. And then we're gonna go ahead and give you as much live coverage as possible. And right now, um, so Teotu, as as this whole race got started, it's only been roughly about 10 minutes uh, into this race. Um, when do you think this separation might happen if if, uh, if the pack is still tight? Where do you see paddlers uh, breaking down? Is it going to be after that 30 minute mark when we do our first changes roughly? Or do you think uh, that's not really going to affect anybody in the beginning of this race? Yes, the plan is it depends on the strategy. Huh? And it seems maybe if they're good, they just keep calm uh, to save their energy. It depends on the other team if the other team have to push to go catch the first change depend on them but for me is have a good start and to to look around where the canoe is and if you go stay on the good vibes uh, yeah, don't yeah try to go to push because it's 30 miles race absolutely so, yeah, thanks for that that uh, feedback. I think um, a lot of our viewers who are maybe new to paddling um, are going to get a very good insight on exactly what uh, the coaches are doing, what the crews are doing, what the escorts are doing. Um, it's it's going to be a little bit chaotic, I think, on the first potential change because I don't think the boats are going to be separated all too much uh, for the top front of the pack. So you're going to see a lot of maybe uh, teams that are going to hold uh, their changes at that mark that they're allowed to change uh, but as we get back to the front of uh, the top 
is there is there stuff that's happening with the the change uh paddlers in the boat uh is there things that maybe they're thinking about doing when they get into the canoe because uh maybe the paddlers are in a good rhythm uh the first six are having such a good uh a good line and maybe a good direction of everything uh what are those three maybe or two or three that are changing out what do you think uh, is the most important thing after they do make their first change recover recover and good um, maybe tell like where the other canoe are how our lines is if it's good just tell them the speed too if the speed's good if the rhythm the rhythm's too high so maybe go down all that kinds huh yeah and again, uh, guys, we are we're less than 15 minutes into our, our first part of this uh, channel crossing here. So uh, we're bringing this live feed for you and we want to go ahead and uh, right now, maybe if we could give uh, some of what's happening uh, to some of our Tahitian and French viewers um, across the world, if we can maybe uh, share with them what's happening uh, right now, Teoju. OK, là, on est à 10 minutes du départ. Donc, euh, on a vu hein, dans nos premières images que bon, les pirogues jaunes s'est détaché. Mais on voit quand même que les pirogues sont en train de se marquer entre elles. Hein. Donc, comme je disais, c'est le départ, hein, c'est que le début. Donc, il ne faudrait pas aussi trop cramer parce qu'il ben, y a 50 km de course. Et voilà, donc après, par rapport aux stratégies, chacun a sa stratégie. Est-ce qu'il faut prendre... Ben, l'avant c'est le départ ou est-ce qu'il faut rester justement si on a un bon feeling ben, gérer ses efforts pour ne pas trop cramer hein, parce que ben, c'est une longue course hein, n'empêche et les, les conditions là c'est pas ça bouge pas trop il y a un peu de vent un peu de vent de face du courant aussi un petit peu et voilà je pense que les pirogues là vont, vont rester ensemble vont se gérer et après les détails vont se jouer peut-être sur les changements peut-être sur le cap aussi Okay, voila, Michael. Yeah, so uh, so some of our viewers that are on right now, um, Andres, is there any of any comments that maybe need to be addressed or anything um, right now? Currently, um, we are just following the pack. We're gonna go up into the front, and uh, some of our our viewers from across the nation. Uh, did you want to go ahead and translate any of that for us? Oh yeah, oh yeah, Mike. Oh yeah, we have a lot of viewers here. A lot of feedback from the the paddling community live. I. Thank you all of guys for following us and giving this credit. We have issues last yesterday, uh, my Micah. We had like uh, with the equipment. Unfortunately, this this happens right. It's a live streaming. Uh, we are in the ocean, like uh, with a little electronics, so it's always a challenge. But we are here to put this show for you guys. And a lot of people um, having a lot of comments. Uh, Sh uh, Sharon Connor is still there and say thanks. The Associação Vagalume Vaca no Apolinesa. It's a team from Brazil doing comments here. Uh, he think we have around 30 canoes. Uh, I would guess we have more, right? Yeah, currently I, I believe we have um, maybe a handful more than just 30 canoes. But um, as we got into the start, I think um, everybody saw maybe the drone view. And we actually had a, a pack that was a little bit higher up north uh, on the start. And we did have some people, I would say, uh, that spread out over that, over that quarter mile. I think um, right now, we'll probably try to get you a count very shortly on those those uh, canoe count. But uh, one, one thing I do know is there is actually mostly, if not, they're all unlimited canoes. So again, these canoes, um, such as the Puakea, uh, OC6, it's currently only about 150 pounds, uh, about 44 feet long, and um, right now I do I do know that as the majority of the field, we do have uh, clubs like Shell, um, Hanuhan, or uh, sorry, Shell, and we have Offshore using the Mateina canoe. Uh, the Mateina is a little bit on the he heavier than uh, the Puakea boats. They're from approximately 260 pounds you're looking at about a hundred pound difference um Dale, do you think over time uh that weight is uh, gonna be any kind of factor or is that something that everyone is really really comfortable with um i know you might have used both canoes uh, what do you feel uh, on the boat and the choice and how how these clubs have uh, chose their boat to race today 
C'est vrai que sur, ce, sur cette course-là, on distingue deux types hein, de pilotes. Donc il y a la Matahina et la Pouaké. Hein. Donc au niveau des, des poids, la Pouaké est beaucoup plus légère hein, que la Matahina. Mais légèreté, ça ne veut pas aussi dire aller plus vite. Parce que ben, la Matahina, on sait, nous, à Tahiti, comment elle, elle réagit dans toutes les conditions. Maintenant, euh, c'est vrai que ben, c'est un autre style de rame aussi. The strokes different between the Matahina and the Puakea because of the wake. So when it's lighter, so you have to put more like rhythm. Instead of Matahina, you can just like use your body, use the glide. That's the difference between those canoes. So as, as you heard, uh, there is there's some differences obviously with these canoes and the, the stroke and how it's applied to make these boats uh, move and make their way across the channel. Some of the things we are noticing as we head to the front, there's definitely a, a little surge in the tide and swell. So I, I do think, um, I think our men paddler are going to have an awesome uh, race here. They're going to have the opportunity to potentially get some decent swell and maybe uh, find some good uh, pushes here and there. And um, we're going to see so much action in this 30 mile course here. Um, currently, it looks like we have just about 27 miles uh, left in this race. Um, as you know, we made our way to the front. Um, boats have started to separate, but we do see... Um, a, a and we have more comments here. We have more comments. Patrick saying, let's go. Marcio Ferreira, top André, pessoal do Brasil aí, obrigado. Frank Terad from Margin, like I was watching us right now. Thank you, Frank, for giving this support to us here, following us. Luis Gustavo Esteves asking, everything is fine today. Big hug, André. Fabio Dascola from Miami. Valeu, André. My friend Fabio Dascola, the hammer. The hammer. Juan Lorenzo, Juan Lorenzo. Lu, Lu, Juan Lorenzo is asking here, uh, uh, Micah, can you, can you see and explain at the broadcast the strategies used for, for a race? Uh, it's kind of confusing here. Uh, so he want to know, he want to learn, learn about the strategies for a race like that, uh, how they strategize the teams, uh, the race. You know uh, how they are going to be behave, the changes and everything. Can can you guys talk more about that, the the, strat the strategic part of the race? Yeah, sure. So just um, uh, answering that question there. Uh, currently, right now, there is some uh, rules put in place um, about when you can do a change and how to start a change. So the initial strategy, um, again, you can change out from what it looks like is 30 minutes uh, into the course. They're going to allow boats to start doing their changes. And it's, it's just to see if we could get a little bit of uh, separation between some of the canoes. And there's a lot of safety measures that get put in place uh, when it comes to the first part of our race. But at, at this time, we're the strategies right now, we did go over a little bit about the strategy. Um, some of these clubs are going to try to push their best maybe in the first, give or take, 30 to 45 minutes before they do decide to do a change and it will allow them the opportunity to see if uh, if the course needs to be adjusted. So right now we have 27 miles. So the, the course from one point to the other is, it's a big channel here. So you might see boats anywhere from a quarter mile to a half mile uh, separated and they could be in the same positioning. Um, you might not be able to tell who's in first or who's in second because they'll be so spread out until we get a little bit closer so when it comes to strategy right now it's going to be up to some of the paddlers here and then anybody on the crew and you and you can see in this sh drone shot that is shelva with that long stroke uh sharing the lead here with supposedly be is a red boat on the on the right side of shell i would guess that that's kalahuikai that's it oui c'est kalahuikai là hein, qui mène les débats Donc on voit que Shell est en deuxième position là, pas très loin et plus de notre côté dans les bateaux, on peut voir aussi offshore avec les copains de Tahiti, à savoir Ronnie Tama, euh, trois rameurs de Shell hein, qui sont venus renforcer Tauhere, il y a Keoni, euh, Reiho et Coco, hein. donc là ils sont sur une bonne ligne, je pense que là ils sont en train de se marquer aussi parce que ben, pour nous c'est la première fois qu'on fait... Euh, 
c'est la première fois pour nous que nous faisons le channel. Donc euh, je pense que cela c'est plus du marquage pour ne euh, ben, pas prendre aussi un mauvais cap. Et voilà, donc il y a... On voit que les pirogues évoluent bien là. Je pense qu'on est à 20 minutes de course et le premier changement c'est pour bientôt, je pense que c'est dans 10 minutes. Maintenant à savoir comment les, ben, comment les équipes vont, vont, vont manager tout ça. Hein, parce qu'il y en a peut-être qui vont rester parce qu'ils sont dans un bon feeling. Ou ben, il y en a qui ont bien bombardé, ben, il va falloir les changer. Quoi. Donc tout dépendra justement de la forme des gars et de ce qui a été dit au briefing euh, hier soir ou ce matin, les dernières consignes. Right, right. And then uh, Andre, you said you want to share a little bit more with us on uh, some of the questions or you have some comments? Yeah, yeah, Mike, I'm going to just uh, give a shout out for my people in Brazil awesome. uh, to explain then what's happening in this race. Pessoal, aí a prova tá no início e aí você tem um ângulo aí na, na você tá podendo nessa imagem perceber que o time da Shell já tá na liderança ali, dividindo a liderança com a Carra Luikai do, do Hawaii, esses dois times super fortes, bom, a gente não precisa nem falar sobre a Shell, né, uh, multicampeões, talvez a, o grande campeão aí nos últimos 10, 15 anos, vem ganhando tudo, e você pode ver aí que eles começam a prova já naquela, naquele long stroke, aquela, aquela ritmo de remada mais cadenciado, lento, tentando aproveitar todo o glide dessa canoa, né, e o Terroto e o, e o Mike estavam comentando aqui com, comigo, que Muitos reforços do Tahiti para esses barcos havaianos. Uh, o próprio barco que você está atrás da Shell aí, o Carra Luikai, tem reforço tahitiano nesse barco. Um outro barco aqui que vocês não estão na imagem, está um pouco mais atrás, no lado uh, direito, é um outro barco uh, uh, de remadores tahitianos. Parte deles, três remadores da Shell, que o Oni está lá, um júnior da Shell. Nós temos o Coco, uh, nós temos, nós temos uh, uh, o Heiho, está lá, Tim Tahiri. Nós temos parte do Tim Tahiri, parte de Shell e alguns remadores da Califórnia naquele time. Uh, nós temos aí o time da Lani Kai, que a gente nunca pode esquecer, o time do Dani Chia, hein? o Dani Tinho, muito forte, que conhece essas águas como ninguém. Né? Uh, aqui o pessoal, já agradeço desde já. Uh, o, o apoio, o suporte, peço para vocês compartilharem esse link aí, dar um crédito para a gente, compartilhar esse link com os amigos aí, para a gente ter bastante visualização. Uh, os comentários aqui, a Cláudia Vidal, André, fantástico, obrigado Cláudia, eu sei que você é uma grande apoiadora da VAI, trabalha sério para isso, a Cláudia, para quem não conhece, uma grande remadora de VAI, uh, uh, recentemente se mudou para os Estados Unidos aqui, mora na Flórida, nós temos aqui também o Fábio Dascola, outro remador do Brasil que está aqui presente nessa transmissão, também mora na Fraia, um tremendo remador uh, de canoa uh, Fábio, um abraço aí meu amigo, continua aí na, na batalha da V1 aí uh, Márcio Ferreira, top André, obrigado Márcio, obrigado pelo apoio Luiz Gustavo Esteves esse cara é amigo meu pessoal de infância um grande amigo, Luiz Gustavo um abraço, o Gustavo para quem não, 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 não conhece, o Luiz Gustavo ele, ele e o irmão dele participaram do primeiro time de, de canoa Havaiana, que a gente chamava Canoa Havaiana, a Canoa Polinésia, uh, tempos atrás no Brasil, era parte do meu time lá, eu, Gustavo, uh, o Beto, bom, um abraço para todos aí, um abraço para meus amigos de Santos aí, o Cauê Serra, uh, o Celso Filete, entre outros, o Roberto Esmera, grandes amigos, grandes amigos, desde já agradeço ao suporte de todos aí, guys. Uh, continue ligados aí e seguindo essa transmissão A Shell continua liderando essa prova O time, o time da Carra Luikai na segunda posição Mas nada definido, a prova só começou Muitos times, eles estão escolhendo diferentes linhas aqui Está bem uh, espalhado esse primeiro grupo uh, um, Mas uh, a Shell e a Carra Luikai estão liderando aí por uma não, não diria nem 100 metros, uma pequena diferença dos outros times. Vamos ficar ligado porque as condições aqui vão ser talvez desafiadoras. Hoje não está tão quente como estava ontem, mas a ondulação deu uma subida por, por causa da aproximação de um furacão aqui na, na, perto da Califórnia. Então vamos ver o que, que espera dessa prova aqui. Uh, comigo, eu já falei aqui, comigo no barco nós temos o Mike Alama, um grande nome da V1 na em Hawaii, grande divulgador do esporte, e nós temos também Terroto de Bois aqui, Timmer Tahiri, CPS, Shell, você 
escolhe o time aí, o cara remou, um dos maiores lemes uh, uh, da canoagem, uh, aí podemos dizer aí, grande, um, um, grande, um grande peperu. Uh, já desde já quero agradecer aqui o nosso, o nosso barco de apoio que nós temos aqui, o Hussein Sagre, o John Calazito e a Shelly participando dessa transmissão aqui, dando suporte para a gente. Nós botamos essa transmissão de pé, último minuto, perdemos equipamento ontem, tivemos que correr atrás de equipamento. Pessoal, compartilhe o link, dá esse crédito para a gente aí, que é muito importante. Vocês sabem como é que a VAR, a VAR... É, é, é um esporte maravilhoso A gente faz isso aqui não, não por dinheiro A gente gasta dinheiro, a gente faz isso Para compartilhar esse amor da vaca Que a gente tem aqui com vocês né? No Brasil, principalmente meus amigos aí do Brasil uh, Que está fazendo bonito no cenário mundial Eu venho para cá Todo mundo fala a respeito do Brasil Então pessoal do Brasil, aí, desde já Um grande abraço para todos os organizadores de prova aí do Brasil, parabéns a todos vocês, meu amigo Fábio Valongo, uh, man, entre outros aí, aos atletas, sem comentários, atletas brasileiros excepcionais aí que tiveram no Tahiti, uh, eu, eu, o Robert, a Dani, bom, inúmeros atletas, eu vou esquecer nome de muitos aqui, o pessoal vai ficar triste comigo, mas não fiquem, uh, durante essa transmissão nós vamos estar... Tá, Tentando trazer o, o, o Ronald Williams durante a transmissão, que é um grande nome aí da, da VAA no Brasil. Para quem não conhece, todos conhecem. Ele praticamente aí, pioneiro, pioneiro do nosso esporte, junto com o Fábio Paiva aí. Uh, fizeram a grande, esse grande projeto que é trazer uh, a canoa polinésia, a Outrigger Canoe, para o Brasil. Vamos estar tá tentando trazer ele junto nessa transmissão. E... Vamos voltar aqui para o inglês com o meu amigo Maica e Terroto. Mas galera, comentário aí tá de pé, manda abraço aí, perguntas, qualquer questões que vocês quiserem durante a prova, curiosidades, nós estamos aqui para responder. Maica, I was explaining my folks in Brazil about how the race is going, right? And uh, the cultural aspect also of this race, um, giving the and to share this link with people to give us this credit so we can spread what is happening here this is what is all about va vibes is just share this passion for the for the sport with more people uh, around the world right If people in france in tahiti they want to see they want to leave the va so we are here to this to do this to bring them image with audio for you guys to to enjoy yeah again andre uh, thanks for uh, bringing all of the all of this live feed uh, here guys at va vibes it's all about it's all about the passion for Uh, paddling and uh, with that passion of paddling comes a lot of the cultural side um, uh, for myself uh, being Hawaiian and being a part of a family that builds canoes and uh, wants to continue to see the youth uh, build canoes and paddle and and be culturally invested because uh, with paddling comes comes so much more uh, so much more of the respect uh, for one another and um, Again, there's some things that we, we should always do, which is uh, respect the VAW. Um, we traveled around the world uh, on a canoe, and that's how we were you know, brought to uh, Hawaii. And for us, it's, um, it's about continuously bringing that legacy to the, the young children that we have. So I know that um, my, my family in Tahiti, they do an, an excellent job of continuously promoting paddling for the youth and how healthful it is for them the the lifestyle and the wellness but um, paddling can be absolutely fun on days like this where you know you got a, a swell running behind you you've got a crew that's dialed in and right now they're they look like they're having fun out there looks like uh, conditions are absolutely amazing uh, what do you think uh, Teo do right now we looks like we're following about the top 10 canoes um, it looks like we do have a couple of the strong Tahiti crews involved as well as it looks like Kalahui Kai has a mix of Tahitians, uh, paddlers from the U.S., paddlers from Hawaii, and um, a few others. Um, what do you think is going to uh, pan out over this next, give or take, uh, 30 minutes to one hour? Oui, donc là, on est revenu à l'avant. On voit que Shell aussi est bien remonté là. Shell est bien revenu à l'avant avec Kalahui Kai. On voit qu'en troisième position, il y a les Hawaïens. Je pense que c'est l'équipe de Danny Ching qui est là. I think that Danny Ching on three, third place. Euh, ensuite, il y a les copains là, de offshore avec euh, renforcés par des rameurs de Shell. 
C'est vrai que pour revenir à ta question, euh, Galahuika a été renforcé hein, par des Tahitiens. Donc, euh, ouais, c'est un mix entre Tahiti et, et Hawaii. Hein. Yes, yes. So it looks like um, currently again, guys, it looks like we do have a, a little bit of a separation with maybe our top 10 uh, leaders here. They've uh, tried to gain control and it looks like they're going to just fight and keep positioning. And, you know, again, we have a long ways to go. We have about 25 more miles before we reach uh, Newport. Um, jetties. What I was uh, asked uh, earlier is how fast do you think these canoes are going? Well, just to give you an idea, when our boat was moving, we were running at about 8.5 miles per hour and we almost couldn't keep up with some of these crews. So that's telling you that these boats are absolutely flying. Um, currently, as uh, Teotu said, it looks like Shell has put their position in one. It looks like they're followed close be closely behind uh, Kalahui Kai offshore and it looks like maybe Lanakila but awesome paddlers uh, in this race here and I think um, for those of you that are viewing again thank you for following us we're trying to bring you as much uh, live feed as possible and keep you informed throughout the entire race right now we could be nearing maybe our first changes uh, will be coming up shortly it would be a good idea to explain a little bit later when we do get a chance to catch live feed of a, a change so we can explain to our viewers uh, what's happening. Uh, so these crews uh, currently, they have nine man team. So there is six paddling currently and there's going to be three replacement paddlers on their escort boats. So these chase boats are going to get themselves in position shortly and potentially do some changes. But right now, again, we're only uh, just a little over half an hour into this uh, race course. from Avalon all the way to Newport Jetty. We're making our way back up to the leader leader pack here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and bring you some more live coverage with our top potentially 10 crews. And uh, we can start giving you the names of those crews and uh, seeing what happens because um, currently right now, looks like we're almost in the time frame for a potential water change. At this point in time, um, we're gonna see if there's gonna be any adjustments. Uh, we'll, we'll try to bring a, a change to you and explain to you uh, how they're gonna change, how much time it should take, and if it's gonna actually affects, uh, affect these uh, crews as they continue down this channel. The one thing I, I do wanna do is, again, we wanna thank um, Audi Outrigger World for sponsoring us here uh, to bring Vaa vibes to you, as well as uh, Tahiti Vaa. So 
as we make our way to the front, we're going to go ahead and try to lay out what this course is going to look like for the next few hours. As of currently, it looks like it's going to be just under four hours, uh, potentially before we see our first crossing of the top leader pack. But it does look like these boats are still really strong here. The top pack has definitely been uh, putting it on for this uh, first part of the race. So we're going to go ahead and uh, explain some things to you in, in a little bit. But do you, you want to let them know what we're doing uh, right now and uh, give a little feedback to our Tahiti viewers and our French viewers? Oui, donc là, on essaye de rattraper hein, l'avant de la course. Euh, je pense que la plupart des pirogues là, ont changé. Ça fait 35 minutes de course, donc euh, ils ont changé trois bonhommes. Et on remarque déjà que ben, le niveau du classement, ça n'a pas trop bougé. On voit que Shell est en train de, de l'idée, mais plus haut, on voit qu'Alahuica est aussi sur une autre, une autre ligne. Hein. Donc... Euh, on voit aussi en troisième position euh, la Nakila. Je pense qu'on voit aussi offshore qui sont côte à côte. Juste un peu en retrait, on voit euh, l'équipe de Hawaï. Et je pense que la pirogue bleue là, c'est Outrigger. Outrigger est là aussi. Yeah. I think it's Outrigger de Blue Canoe. With George, I saw George this morning. It looks like it, and then on top of that, it looks like we just saw uh, one of our our first uh, changes there on that uh, live feed, if you guys were following the drone coverage. Uh, we did have a, a, a change there. Um, with this change, um, I, I do see a show, looks like they're coming up here on the inside of us. I think we're expecting to see the first uh, potential changes uh, with Shell moving up, but we did see one of our crews uh, get that change. Right now, currently, um, for those of you that wanted to know, I got a few question, uh, questions yesterday on how cold it is. So currently we're looking at about a high 60 degree uh, temperature. So it's, it's definitely on the colder side, especially for uh, paddlers that are traveling international and maybe coming from the, the more on the warm tropic side. So absolutely, I think, uh, I don't think the cold is gonna be the issue, um, but it definitely can be a, a wake up for anybody that's jumping into these waters. You definitely don't want to stay in there too long. So as soon as uh, they get out, it's going to be cool and refreshing, but they want to get back onto the chase boat. When they do the change, like like you see, when they make that call, who's uh, making the call uh, in the boat or are you guys making calls from your escort, from the coach? The instructions come from the boat. In general, it's already decided the morning or the morning. Donc le coach euh, définit ouais, qui va descendre en premier. Et euh, ben, c'est par les positions des rameurs. C'est-à-dire que si on change le premier, le 3 et le 5, du coup, ben, on dit 1, 3, 5. Et sur la pirogue, on essaye de répéter aussi parce que ben, on est tellement focus dans le match que souvent ben, on oublie qu'on qu doit sauter. Ou souvent ça arrive aussi parce que ben, tu ne devais pas sauter, mais tu as sauté. Parce C'est pour ça qu'en général, on répète plusieurs fois. Et au niveau des changements, le, il faut changer assez rapidement. Pour ne pas perdre de temps, pour ne pas perdre de, de vitesse hein, pour, pour la pirogue, pour que la pirogue continue quand même à glisser. Parce que redémarrer à chaque fois, ben, ça nécessite encore euh, du jus. Quoi. Surtout que tu viens de ramer là pendant 35 minutes. Et s'il faut relancer, relancer, faire un autre départ encore, donc c'est... Ça va être fatigant sur le long terme. So right now you can see our drone coverage right now is right over our offshore group. Do you want to go over who might be in that canoe uh, in the offshore boat right here that our drone is on? Teotu? Uh, ouais, si on peut s'approcher un petit peu. Bon, classement aujourd'hui, on voit Shell là, par rapport à notre position à nous, peut-être à 100, 120 mètres. Ensuite, on voit sur la ligne tout en haut là, Kalahuikai. On voit qu'en troisième position, la pirogue rouge et jaune, il semble que c'est l'Anakila. Les copains de offshore avec euh, Tahiti et renforcé par trois rameurs de Shell. En, sur la rouge, la Matahina rouge en quatrième position. Donc on, derrière eux, l'équipe de Hawaï, euh, renforcée également par un copain tahitien, Manantea. Et on peut remarquer sur cette pirogue que ce sont des anciens rameurs de Melo Johnny. 
et appelé après par Red Bull. Donc euh, ce sont que, que des amis. Donc ça fait du bien de se retrouver là sur le plan d'eau et, et de voir que ben on est toujours dans le, dans le jeu quoi. La pirogue bleue là juste derrière en sixième position c'est Outrigue. Après c'est vrai que ben, l'écart s'est creusé là, c'est dur de donner un classement après justement ce, ce, ce lot de, de pirogue. Hein. Donc what I said is that when it change time, you have to change like quick, yeah? don't to lose speed, don't to lose, because if you lose speed so that you have to make a, another start and it's gonna pay off at the end. So that's why you have to go in quick in the canoe and then to, to take the rhythm with the other guys. So, so just now we again um, we're we're actually chasing um, a few of the top crews here. We're watching offshore with a, a handful of Tahitian paddlers. We do move over. We had Kalahui Kai slightly to the outside of the offshore canoe boat. We have Shell currently up up ahead in the front. Um, there is also another canoe a little bit higher up uh, to the north side that we're uh, we're trying to. Uh, get a read on those canoes, but I think so if if this is some of these paddlers first race Do you think it's going to uh, pay off for those that are from say California and maybe have done the crossing multiple times? Um, it's definitely going to help if somebody in the canoe has done the crossing especially for the steersman so in a case like some of the, the crews uh, what is the most important on the boat? Is it going to be the boat captain choosing the course for the steersman? Yes, because on the escort boat you have the GPS, so they, I think that, that they, they trust the line. And it depends to how it's evaluated. So you have to keep an eye on the other canoe too. You have the line, but maybe they are on good, good line, good current. So uh, yes, it's all the that things that you have to to control, huh? and yep. it's the escort boat mostly because of they have their eyes in the whole things than the paddlers, and they just give the advices to the the steersmen that okay, you better go down or go left. For some of you that uh, may have never done any types of uh, changes, a nine-man change, some of you paddlers that only do uh, iron. Uh, races, uh, this is a great opportunity to, to view some of the best paddlers in the world. Um, arguably, you can say we have the best paddlers in the world currently right now in this race. And we're, we're going to go out on a limb and say they're, they're definitely battling for a first place with an outside boat. I believe they have a really, really good line. Everyone uh, seems really strong in this top 10 uh, pack here. So uh, there is a little bit of a separation between each canoe. Um, the furthest we see is maybe close to a half mile distance between uh, the length across from each other. So again, we have a long race to go, less than 24 miles before we reach uh, the Newport jetty. Uh, currently, we're, we're basically on a steady 8.8 .8 miles per hour pace, and we can't keep up with some of these canoes at that pace, which is really uh, something to tell you that these these boats are moving really, really fast, and it's a really good course today. Very good weather, very good water. Um, it's where we're in for a very exciting fight, probably towards the middle of this channel. Um, Andres, do you want to go ahead and um, let your your community and the viewers on, on your vibes, let them know what we were talking about this whole time. Um, we want them to know uh, what we were saying when it comes to changes and uh, the Peperu, the steersmen, uh, the boat coaches, and well, things like that when it comes to the strategy. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, before before I change to Portuguese, there's just more comments coming uh, from the community. Amelia, awesome, awesome coverage today, guys. Thank you for bringing us in action. Uh, Monica Diaz from Miami. Monica Diaz, my wife. Thank you. Thank you a lot for watching this race and supporting. Thank you very much. Take care of the kids. <laughs> thank you a lot. Love you. Cedric Campbell, Big Island, Junior Va'a Imua. Do you know guys like a big uh, Cedric Campbell from um, Big Island? Uh, a good shout out for you guys. We have a lot of people from the Big Island here racing. The, the Kona boys are here. 
chase with the big group that went to Samoa, reinforced with the some Tahitians, some different paddlers. Yes, uh, now change to Portuguese. Uh, pessoal aí, a uh, prova, uh, as primeiras trocas começaram a acontecer agora. Uh, nós tivemos muita ação ali, você pode ver, acompanhar o, o barco da Carralu e Caio fazendo a primeira troca. O barco vermelho aí, esse barco que vocês estão vendo aí vermelho, é um barco que tem esse é offshore, é um barco composto por três remadores da Shell, dois remadores do time Artahiri e entre outros remadores, e alguns remadores aqui dos Estados Unidos. É um barco que está mandando bala aí no começo, aí está tá entre os líderes e está tendo um grande desempenho aí. Pessoal uh, que estão nos comentários aqui, muito obrigado. Vamos, vamos, vamos compartilhar esse link com os outros amigos aí para, para que eles possam seguir e participar com a gente dessa prova maravilhosa que é a Catalina Channel Crossing 2023. Uh, Mike, my friends in Brazil, I just gave them a shout out explaining the changes that we, we just started, right? Uh, Next change we should be expecting, they're going to be changing around like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on the boat, on the captain, right? Uh, or feedbacks of uh, paddlers or strategy, uh, waves and everything affects the, those changes, right? Yeah, for sure, um, Andre. So right now we did encounter some of our first changes here. Uh, we did have a few changes uh, happening. Um, some crews are haven't done a change yet. Um, they might even push it as far as one hour because positioning is really, really good right now. The boat must be running really well and the paddlers inside are, some of these paddlers uh, on average can, you know, paddle 20 miles on a OC1, but more specifically, uh, we uh, like to paddle V1, so we like to paddle a lot of rudderless canoes and it gives us a really good feeling of the boat and everyone inside the canoe eventually becomes a steersman and uh, so I would say that all of these paddlers can last I think some of these are willing to last the whole entire unlimited race and they'll go iron the whole way but um, tell, you, tell us a little bit on see if we change or not Là, on peut voir que Hawaii a changé en l'espace de 10 minutes so peut-être qu'il y a des changements qui n'ont pas très bien fonctionné Peut-être qu'il y en a d'autres qui, ben, ça fonctionne très bien, donc autant garder dans ce move. Hein. So about the change, it really depends. Hein. It really depends. We, on the briefing, on the last night, last night, we just talk about it. Okay, we have to change maybe half hour. But we see that in half hour, the, the canoes have a good glide and the, the paddlers are good, good condition. So they don't really need to change now. So it, It really depends on what they say yesterday and what it's during the race. Huh? Absolutely, I think that's that's the best way to put it. Um, you are making adjustments uh, continuously uh, as we do these uh, changes. So we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna go ahead and uh, bring bring you some uh, advertisement. We're gonna go and move up to the front of the pack again. Enjoy. <laughs>
This is probably one of our first few times going on to the V6. Uh, next few weeks, I'll learn how to steer as well. And I hope that we can paddle just like them. one of our first few times going on to the V6. Uh, next few weeks I'll learn how to steer as well. And I hope that we can paddle just like them. Hey guys, welcome back to the 2023 Catalina Crossing here. Uh, we are live at the top of the pack. Currently, um, we do look like we got an idea of exactly one and two, and it was uh, as predicted. It looks like we have uh, Shell Va'a and Kalahui Kai. It looks like uh, the two crews have been battling for this, uh, holding this first place position. Absolutely, it looks like there's no more difference than maybe a couple of canoe lengths. It will be hard to tell because there's probably a good quarter mile distance between the two crews here, um, but there's a lot of race to happen. We are about 21 miles out from the Newport jetty. Um, there's definitely some calls going on to to the shell boat right now. Uh, what do you think uh, they're talking about right now, uh, Teotu, when they're uh, right now as they start uh, addressing some of the crews? Do you think they might be doing a water change or something? Oui, je pense que là, ben, encore une fois, c'est une gestion, c'est une gestion avec le, le bateau. Euh, bon, on est à 55 minutes de course. Euh, la route est encore longue. Mais c'est vrai que quand tu as quelqu'un aussi devant toi ou à côté de toi, ben ça, tu commences aussi à douter peut-être un petit peu. Mais bon, on les connaît, hein, ce sont des machines. Euh, ils feront ce qu'il faut pour, pour, pour faire la différence. Mais je pense qu'à ce stade-là, à une heure de course, les boys ils ont un bon feeling. On voit qu'ils sont calmes, hein, plutôt calmes. Maintenant, on voit pas très bien qu'est-ce que Kala Huikai... Euh, Euh, au niveau de leur coup de rame, hein, on voit que Shell là est bien posé. Après, bon, c'est le coup, hein, de, c'est le coup de rame de à adopter pour la Matahina. Euh, ouais, je pense que là, ils vont peut-être pas tarder à changer aussi, parce que. Ou je pense que le premier changement, non, ils vont peut-être rester un peu plus longtemps, de sorte que ben ceux qui sont qui ont fait le départ, ils puissent se reposer un peu plus. I'm telling that maybe now they're gonna change more longer. 
because it's the beginning of the race and it's to make the three first paddlers who uh, goes out to recover more recover and take their time perfect so yeah it looks like uh, again you know we have our top pack here uh, we have looks like Kalahui Kai, Shell we do have Offshore right behind as well as it looks like uh, the Hawaii boys um, we have them behind so the boys from Keoho uh, on the Kona side um, they are very close behind um, but this pack here is probably the strongest pack uh, that we could have in the Catalina Crossing as of right now and we're seeing a, a really good battle here uh, for our podium. Um, currently right now we've only seen maybe one change happen on these top half of the pack and it looks like I, like Teotu said I think they're gonna hold out and keep it long because it's still early in the race with 20 miles to go um, when they start making changes a lot of times when they go on on the canoe uh, for example some of the Hoi paddlers when they get on of course uh, you know they're gonna go ahead and have some water maybe do a little bit of electrolytes uh, something to eat uh, personal favorite is a uh, taro or kalo and um, uh, sometimes a, a poi pack but is there anything that uh, you would want to have in your system when you're paddling this long Oui, c'est ça. Hein. Donc, euh, lorsque l'équipage qui, qui est descendu de la pirogue descend, euh, monte sur le bateau, donc en général, ben, il faut qu'il euh, bon, qu mange. Hein. Pas manger un steak frit, mais je veux dire, il faut qu'il se ravitaille bien, qu'il euh, qu récupère hein, par rapport à l'effort qu'ils ont donné. Parce que ben, les 30 premières minutes, forcément, c'était violent. Il fallait sortir son épingle du jeu et rester euh, au contact hein, des premières pirogues. Donc, euh, yes you you told that the the guys have to to take like food not like uh, french fries and steak <laughs> but something to not a burger to recover, fries, not a burger. <laughs> <laughs> no picnic no picnic, no picnic. On, the, on, the, on the boat and a lot of comments coming here uh, live uh, as i said cedric campbell from big island we have also here sharon she represents san diego kai eloa club so a big shout out for San Diego Sky Eloa Club. Let's go. André Prats from Brazil, uh, 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 Paralympic athlete, world champion. André Prats, uh, meu amigo André Prats, um abraço aí para você por estar acompanhando. Je we cannot forget, Janelle uh, is saying great work to our boat captain here, Chris, doing a great job. Fernanda Pires from Brazil, she's saying great job. Uh, great job you guys, um, nothing better than watching VAA Vibes in the afternoon, she says. That's awesome. Yeah. Absolutely, VAA Vibes is, uh, is life. Uh, we're, we're, we're paddlers here, so this is paddlers for paddlers. We, we do this because we love it, um, and you know, we want to have everyone a part of that excitement, and this is what it's all about uh, for here in California. So this is the 2023 Catalina Championship Crossing here. Um, this, I believe, is their 60th annual, and um, you know, I, I do believe uh, last year uh, was a little bit hectic because last year there was a, a hurricane and a storm that kind of disrupt uh, the normal, traditional route from uh, Catalina all the way to Newport and Newport to Catalina, vice versa. But uh, I know they're all excited to be doing this race today with such unreal conditions. Um, this is ideal. This is really ideal. I think. Uh, the only other thing might be a little bit better was maybe a little bit of a bigger swell, bigger bump. But I think the paddlers are happy with the condition. And I think we're going to see a really good battle. Um, following close behind Kalahui Kai and following with uh, Shell, uh, we do want to give a shout out. Uh, there's been some live uh, comments here about our Big Island boys. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Big Island uh, crew here, um, they went to the IVF. Uh, world distance in Samoa uh, took podium at first place here um, so super excited that we could actually do that if you look on that drone feed we just have um, we just seen Shell did a, a change uh, Shell has officially changed um, they they did it so fast and rapidly we missed exactly who did the change uh, for I us think I think feed. they did one two and five or, or one two and four one two and four so again um, uh, Teotu, if you can explain, um, so if they do a change, one, two, and four, 
obviously that call is coming from the, the coach on the boat and he wants to make that change. Uh, most important uh, changes, uh, it, would you say there's going to be a big difference in the stroker or have they paddled so much together that it's not going to affect anybody uh, in Shell's boat that we saw on the screen? Ouais, là ils viennent de changer. Donc, euh, what, what he said, one to four. One to four. One to four. Donc, un deux quatre. Je pense que le premier changement, c'était un trois cinq. Donc, en général, dans des courses à changement comme ça, où on change à trois bonhommes, en, en général, on change tout le temps le premier, hein, le celui qui est à l'avant, le fahoro. Pourquoi? Parce que le fahoro doit garder justement la cadence. So sorry to stop you. It looks like even right now we have a change with the Hawaii boys. Uh, right here we have the KO crew making that switch. Some Big Island and Tahitian paddlers. They also did a one, two, one, two four, four change. Um, yes, that's what I said. That usually we usually change every time the stroke because the stroke got to get to get the rhythm. And uh, I believe that the first change was one three five. So now it's one two four. Huh? The steersmen yep. usually stay the whole race, or maybe not, but generally he stays the whole race. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and for the new new paddlers or anybody watching our live feed, again, this is a change race. Uh, so what happens is your chase or escort boat, specifically for that crew, uh, will move up ahead, uh, they'll get a good distance, they will drop off their paddlers in the water, and those those paddlers will be waiting uh, for the canoe to come, um, and they're going to do their change. So on, voit, on voit quand même que là, je pense que Shell a changé sa ligne, hein. ils sont remontés plus vers euh, Kalahuikai. Hein. On voit que là, euh, je pense que, ben voilà, ils ont peut-être remarqué que Kalahuikai est... Et plus on avance très bien, donc peut-être que eux sont dans un courant ou peut-être qu'ils c'est du marquage. Hein? We can see that Shell changed their line hein, to go straight to Kalahuikai canoe. Maybe Kalahuikai have a good line. Right. So it's all uh, all about marquage. Hein? So just like that earlier when we talked about strategy, uh, when we had some of the live comments on the strategy, this is this is the part of uh, adapting and changing to the conditions and maybe finding uh, some better runs or better lines. As you can see, um, it does look like Shell pushed up a little bit towards Kalawikai, and then we will see how the battle progresses uh, from your screen with the drone footage. It looks like maybe Kalawikai is leading slightly, yeah. maybe for by a couple canoe lengths. For half of a boat, depending on the angle, from this angle of our drone shot, you can see that Kalawikai is maybe a boat or half a boat ahead. But it's very interesting. I was going to bring this aspect because I'm, I was reading the comments here. More comments coming. Clayton Campbell, great coverage, steady camera pictures. Go Kona Big Island. And uh, Cedric Campbell, sharing my nephew, Zeke, Zeke, one of ten of the Big Island. So I was going to bring this, Iranildo from Brazil, my friend. I was going to bring this, Micah Tehoto. This race just started. We're not even an hour of race. The race is just just started. We're going to be seeing the leaders finishing this race at around like a three hours and a half, lower three hours maybe. Uh, but we could check on the world championship. The Kona boys, Hawaii was not even the between the first five after the first lap, and they came out with a big surfing at the end of the race and they slap everyone, you know. Uh, so we can expect like a good. I know they're like strong guys, they have like a maybe keeping the pace and come stronger in the second part of this race, right? Um, for sure, for sure. So those uh, Hawaii, the Hawaii crew that won uh, for the IVF, um, amazing, amazing paddlers. Um, I was lucky enough to sit down, talk story with some of them and, you know, hear a little bit about the race and what it was like to be in Samoa. There was definitely some challenges. Uh, it, it took a the time to travel there and arrive and you know the expectations uh, but it was also an iron race so there was no changes so the boys maybe trained together because they had a good time uh, length of time to train but absolutely I think they put on the best effort that they could because it resulted in the finish as Teotu said it's not always about how you start it when you come to the finish that's the result 
and um, they they definitely did a really good job surfing some of that condition. Um, Avon currently is the steersman uh, for that crew and a very talented young man. Um, they also had a lot of strong paddlers, uh, Trey, Chase, uh, and currently even right now they have a crew that's a little bit mixed and they've paddled with uh, some of the Tahitian boys uh, previously so it's it's a good opportunity to uh, race together and you know you need nine to race so pick up some of your friends and make this race happen but um, definitely a big shout out to uh, the Hawaii boys from uh, Keoho and from Big Island and you know really good showing um, would have loved to see how it would look when you race against obviously just like them some of the best paddlers in the world um, I think the the next uh, important race that's coming up is going to be in November it's going to be Haviki Nui um, Teoti maybe you can tell us a little bit about Haviki Nui and what to expect um, what they have going on during that time is there a solo race for V1 maybe prior um, give some of the, the viewers a little bit of a taste of what Tahiti is like when it comes to racing down in Tahiti Oui, Maika, mais juste pour compléter, pour revenir au, au rameur de Kona, ça fait quand même plusieurs années qu'il y a eu des échanges entre euh, Big Island et les boys de DT. Donc du coup, ils connaissent la façon de ramer des Thaïtiens et ils, ils ont juste amélioré tout ça, ils se sont juste entraînés dessus. Donc euh, Heari Mama est descendu là-bas pour les apprendre à ramer. Ils savent ramer, mais pour les apprendre la technique thaïtienne. Et après, ben, on a toujours gardé justement hein, ces relations d'échange, hein, ces bonnes relations euh, ensemble. Là, ils ont été euh, renforcés par euh, Manatea, hein, Manatea Bob Dupont. Yeah. Donc, il a tout gagné aussi avec euh, DT dans Molokai, Hawaii, Kinui. Et il y a l'étoile montante aussi, Temaui. Donc, un jeune junior euh, qui a un avenir euh, très prometteur. Hein. Donc, uh, I, I tell that, uh, don't forget that, that the Kona boys, Kona boys parlors, like Kainoa, Kua, and Daniel, Absolutely. make an exchange between EDT guys before. So, we keep this good relation between together. And that's why now they're still on the game. They know what the Tahitian yeah. techniques is. And they just yeah, so solid. made it these, happen. These boys are so solid. And like you said, um, there's so much strong connections around the world and you know it's getting stronger as you know paddlers um, travel and experience new races around the world um, like was mentioned you know Kua, Kainoa um, having the relationships with uh, Tahitian brothers you know and making making family because we are all family when it comes to paddling no matter where you come from we are family and I've met so many amazing paddlers all over the world and you know we have paddlers from Japan, Singapore, uh, Micronesia, Australia, Canada just on and on and you know the paddling sport has absolutely grown and I, I think one of the biggest ways that the, the sport can grow is participating in events and trying to improve uh, with your crews and you know if you ever get the opportunity to paddle with paddlers who are absolutely exceptional at at this uh, sport learn all the knowledge you can uh, get all the information so it allows your paddling to become a little bit more better but absolutely the passion never never stops no matter you come first or last the passion of paddling is is awesome but it's always nice to be up in front so keep at it and uh, we're we're following very closely with these uh, crews um, Haviki Nui, what, what is that like? What, what is uh, Haviki Nui for those that uh, don't know uh, in Tahiti? Uh, is it a, a long race, short race? Uh, what, what, what can they expect if they watch Haviki Nui when we go down there? Well, uh, Haviki Nui is a course en marathon en V6, so sans changement. En trois jours, so on démarre à Huahine, aux îles sous le vent. Euh, on rejoint Réatea, donc c'est une étape de 45 km. Le, le deuxième jour, il y a la possibilité de changer pour le deuxième jour, pour euh, faire reposer euh, les rameurs qui ont fait justement la première étape. Donc deuxième jour, Réatea Taha, c'est la plus courte, donc c'est la plus rapide, mais c'est l'étape qui envoie euh, 